نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد I'll tell you a story starting off that was told to me by one of our mashayikh, uh, one of our teachers at Tadis. It was in the middle of the night. Brother got out of bed. He was married. He had a, a daughter. When he got out of bed, he went to the living room in the middle of the night. Yeah, okay. And he put in a tape and turned on the TV. Right when he put it on, he sat down to watch. And his daughter got up and she came out of her bed, came out of her room. She opened the door and she saw her father watching pornography. At five years old, she said, shame on you, father, shame on you. Immediately the father went and turned off the TV and the daughter returned back to the room. The father turned off the TV and started thinking about what he had done, what he was doing, and what his daughter had just said to him. And the words, shame on you, father, shame on you, repeated over and over and over again in his mind. When Fajr came, he took a shower and he went to the masjid. And the same words that the prayer kept on repeating over and over again. And tears were coming down his eyes. He couldn't hold back his tears. And after prayer, while he was sitting down, remembering Allah, tears continued to roll down his eyes. And he couldn't hold back neither. He was crying so much that, to, that the people who came to the masjid with him, they were asking him to see if he needed any help, if there was something greatly wrong, if something wrong, if, the, if they, he needed anything. Because he kept on crying, but he didn't reach, so he just shook his head, and everybody just left. That day he went to work. His eyes were red, he didn't get enough sleep at night time. So his co-workers asked him, said, what's wrong with you, what's wrong? And one of his co-workers, one of his best friends also, he said, this morning I went to the masjid and I prayed. I haven't made sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in almost 40 years. And this was the first time that I made sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala since, since almost 40 years, in 40 years. So he kept the his tears again came down his eyes. And then the whole day the words, shame on your father, shame on you, was repeated over again, over and over and over in his head. So he, he wasn't feeling very well. He was very tired. He had turned off his phone. And when he got home, his wife came up to him. And she said, do you know what happened? And he was scared. He was afraid maybe his daughter had said something about what, had, what she, had saw last, she had seen last night. And so he said, no, what? And she said, our daughter just passed away. I was trying to contact him. She just passed away. And so, again, you know, his, his tears hadn't even stopped from last night. And it continued to roll down his cheeks. So they prepared for the janazah. Brought the brought his child, his daughter down to the grave.
wave, and a smile came to his face. It was the first smile that came to his face in a long time. So his friend asked him, why did you smile? Why are you smiling? And he said, today, I buried my daughter, but she left the light that still remains in my heart to this, that I still have. And that light was the light of Toba, the light of returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, later on, the brother always was continuous in coming to the masjid and so forth, and his life to totally changed. He always prayed, he always was on time, and always took care of his obligations to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from that time and from that time on. The word shame on your father had changed his life. His daughter reminded him. This month of Ramadan is the month of change, the month of Tawbah. That's what Tawbah means. The word Tawbah Yatubu means to return back to Allah and repent. Return to Allah and repent, meaning to change your lifestyle afterwards to that which is better. When you say istighfar, it's asking Allah with your tongue. Tawbah is changing your whole lifestyle, changing the, your ways of living to the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with. And so this is the month in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to repent. And has given us the opportunity to repent to Him. Opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. And we, we can change. We can change for the better. And when we do change, we have to make this conviction in our heart that we'll go from now on to the right from now on. One of the conditions is that when you make tawbah, there's specific tawbah from specific sins that you have committed. And then there's a general tawbah where you repent from all the sins that you have committed and you make a conviction in your heart, a promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that from now on you will do all that you can to do all that which pleases Him. And you will change your lifestyle. Whatever Allah tells you to do, you do. Whatever is in the sunnah, you will follow and do it as much as you can. And this is the change in lifestyle that we have, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us, making make it easy for us in this month. Let me give you another story of one of the great scholars of Islam. His name is Al-Fulayl ibn Ayyab. Al-Fulayl ibn Ayyab. Al-Fulayl ibn Ayyab was a highway robber. Highway robbers during those times were very dangerous. They used to steal caravans that used to go by. They used to take the, you know, the merchandise and whatever they had. And if he had to do it, if, if people fought back, then they would, killing was like a normal thing to do. As for Layla ibn Ayyad in his youth, he used to be a highway robber. He was so feared and ruthless that people were afraid of him from Mecca to Medina. People had heard about him. To the point where people were talking about him and saying, uh, when they went to their children to go to sleep, they would say, if you don't close your eyes and go to sleep, I will get Fulayl ibn Ayyadiyya. It was like saying, you better go to sleep or uh, the boogeyman's coming. Like in our time. That's how, that's how ruthless and how, people, how much people feared him as Fulayl ibn Ayyadiyya. And so, one day, he fell in love with a girl, with a woman who had lived in this house, and he wanted to, he, you know, he wanted to see her. He wanted to see her. And you know, he, everyone knows how, how ruthless this Al-Fulayt Mayyot was. He jumped on the roof. He was trying to jump in, from the rooftop into the house. While he was doing that, her father was praying. He stopped to listen because he was about to jump into the house and then this man is reading the Quran. And he gets, he, 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 reach, he reaches an ayat in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَمْ يَأْنِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَخْشَأَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَا نَزَلَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ isn't it time for the believers to have their hearts tremble? Tremble from the remembrance of Allah. And from that, from tremble from that which has been revealed to them of the truth. Isn't it time? Isn't it time to 
soften your heart and to return to Allah to repent. Isn't it time? As for Laylun Layyad, when he heard that, he was about to jump into the house. And actually, what he did, what he usually does is he gets in, he just robs the house or whatever he wants, he gets whatever he wants. That's the way he was. And so he, he, he heard this ayah and he was reminded of it. And tears started coming down his eyes. Tears, tears started coming down his eyes. And so he hopped from the house. Do you want to go inside the house? He went to a small, small place, small hut, in a small area. Where it's, it's still in the middle of the night. And he sees that there's a group of travelers. There's a group of travelers there. And so he's, you know, he lays down close to where they are. And he hears them talking. One of the travelers, he says, you know, I think we should go right now. We should just continue on our way. The other one says, no. That's the way that Yahweh is out there. Forgive us. Don't go right now. Wait till the daytime. It's much safe, much safer. You know, for, uh, that's, that's how the way of my Yahweh is. When he heard that, he said, there must be a reason why Allah is making me listen to these people. Look how much the people feared me. Feared me. So again, his heart started to tremble. And he remembered the ayat again, over and over again in his, in his head. Isn't it time for people's, people's hearts to tremble in the remembrance of Allah, and the fear of Allah? Not in the fear of Fulayl ibn Ayyad. People are like trembling in fear of Fulayl ibn Ayyad. And so he says to himself, he said, he says, he said, it is time, it is time. So the Fulayl ibn Ayyad, he made a conviction in his heart, he said, you will stay in the masjid. You will learn in the masjid until you become a worshiper in the masjid. In the masjid, masjid al-Haram. And so he repented to Allah and he studied with all the scholars that he could, that he studied. And he changed his ways, so much so that he had the, he received the nickname. He received the nickname Abid al Haramain, worshipper of Mecca and Medina. In other words, he was known as the most pious, the most knowledgeable of the of the two most holiest places in Islam, Mecca and Medina. He was known for his piety and righteousness. So he totally changed his ways, changed from a Highway robber, murderer, thief, everything that you can think of was al-Fulayl ibn Ayyad did. But he became, became a great scholar. And so, from this story, you see that al-Fulayl ibn Ayyad, al-Fulayl ibn Ayyad, he was, he changed for the better. He didn't just make istighfar. He totally changed his life until he became the best. The other one, from the worst, to the best. Opposite directions. And so, of course, as for Layl al all the sins that he committed and so forth and things like that, you know, like that it's still like less than the ship in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you, even if it's, even if it's ship. And when you look at, compare that, you know, the story of Layl al and us, and we've never, I'm pretty sure, um, none of us have done a fraction of what Afolayl ibn Ayyad did when he's in his youth. But you see, when he decided, he had full conviction in his heart to change, he became the best. He worked at it. And so we can also. And this is the month of change. This is the month in which we rejuvenate ourselves. Because we are all travelers. Everyone will die. All of us will die. We're living in this world as travelers. Everything is temporary. And so when we move over, and we're, we're, right now we're in, we're in a trip. Every time, if you're, in a, if you're on a trip, if you have a long, long journey to go, you're in your car, could you, would you be able to go from here, from Nashville, all the way to Los Angeles, or to Seattle, without stopping? Definitely you wouldn't. If you were to drive, you would need to go into the pit stops to, to fuel up, to continue on your trip. Otherwise, you're just going to get stuck on the way. And you also, on your trip, 
You need a map. You need to know the directions. You need to have guidance to show which, which, which place to go, which roads to take, and so forth. If you haven't been there, if you, if you haven't been, you haven't taken the road before. You need, you need that. And thus, we're on the trip. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because He is so merciful, He has made pit stops for us on the way to refuel ourselves. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith of Rabbi he said, As-salawat al the five daily prayers, Al-Jum'ah ila Al-Jum'ah, wa Ramadan ila Ramadan, wa kafiratun lima bayna hunda, ila ishtulimit al-kabayin. The five daily prayers, and from Friday to the next Friday, from Jum'ah to Jum'ah, and from Ramadan to Ramadan, is expiation for everything between it, if you avoid the major sins. The five, day, five daily prayers are our daily pit stops to strengthen ourselves, rejuvenate ourselves. You have to understand, our, our, our body uh, makeup, it's not just flesh and blood. It's flesh, blood, and soul, our soul also. Every single day, you cannot go a whole day, a day, you know, you can't go for 24 hours or two without food. You're going to be very hungry. And eventually, you're going to die. There's just a certain amount of time. You can only live so long, so long without water, for example. After three days, your body will no longer function. And after three days, your body will no longer function without water. The same way with food. You have a longer span of time. But in the end, if you don't feel yourself, it, it will die. It will die. And so, our bodies, we need all types of, different types of food to strengthen ourselves. But the thing that we forget, we forget is the spiritual aspect of it. That also dies. And that also needs energy and strength, rejuvenation. It, all of it, it needs that. It needs and so every single day, the five daily prayers, these are the fueling or the pit stops. These are our meal times. But not meal time for our physical body, for the spiritual. Because if you don't have it, you'll die. And you'll be hungry. And you'll feel terrible. The other side, a lot of us, we neglect that side. And you need vitamins also. You know, believe it or not, you need vitamins. Every single morning, the Prophet said, we, our bodies, we, in our bodies, every single joint in our body and so forth, all these joints, they need vitamins. And those vitamins are subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, or akbar, and so forth. The remembrance of Allah, to strengthen us, to keep us strong. And so, in the daily, daily, you know, in our daily lives, when we become, you know, you, when you're busy going to work, when it's time to pray, pray and hear Allah Akbar, that's the time when you need to refuel your, yourself spiritually. You have to refuel your Iman. And after, you know, in a week, on Fridays, this is the weekly, the weekly checkup the weekly pit stop, and then the monthly, the yearly pit stop. The yearly pit stop is Ramadan, the month of Ramadan. And then the once in a lifetime pit stop is the Hajj. When you check yourself, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتَزَوَّلُوا فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّادِ تَقْوَى But what do you need to rejuvenate yourself? What's the fuel that keeps you going? The Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتَزَوَّلُوا تَزَوَّلُوا means Take with you provision, this fuel with you. فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّادِ The best fuel or the best provision you can take with you on your trip right now is taqwa. And that's why we fast. The rather read, mashallah, the ayats in al -Siyan. Listen to the reason why we fast. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ What's the reason for fasting? O ye who believe, fasting, la ilaha illallah. I always choose the wrong time to call. 
Fasting has been prescribed upon you, just as it has been prescribed upon those before you. Why? In order that you may attain taqwa, which is the closest translation you can probably get it, is God consciousness. Being conscious of Allah all the time. Knowing that He's always watching. And this is, we fast for the sake of Allah. But the fruits of the fasting, what are the fruits of fasting? It helps you to attain piety, righteousness, and God consciousness. How does it do that? Listen to what the Prophet said in Hadith Qudsi. He said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, All the deeds of the son of Adam, the sons of Adam, the sons of Adam are his. Illa siyam. Except for fasting. فَإِنَّهُ لِي وَأَنَا أَجَزِيبِ But except for fasting. Fasting is mine and I will be the one who will give the full reward. Will give the reward. What does that mean? What does that mean when we say that fast, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fasting is mine? Isn't everything that we do for Allah say? Like isn't everything prayer and zakat like and so forth? But fasting is special. Why is it special? Because nobody can really fast unless you have taqwa, unless you're sincere, unless you're conscious of Allah. You will not be able to fast. You won't fast. It's the only deed that you really can't force anyone to do. If they do it, it has to be, it, 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 it has to be accompanied with taqwa. Why? Because when you fast, when you tell your kid to fast, for example, your son, you say, son, sit down and do your son fast. You tell him to fast. When it's prayer time, you tell him to go make wudu. When he makes wudu and he's uh, rinsing his mouth, he can drink all he wants and nobody will know. Can you force him to? Mm -hmm. When he prays, you tell him to pray. Son, pray. If you don't see him pray, you can't. Yeah. Well, you haven't prayed yet. I haven't looked, looking at you. Right? But when it comes to fasting, when he's by himself, he can drink all that he wants. He can hide and eat and so forth. The only thing that will prevent him from doing, from not doing so, is if he's conscious of Allah. And that's why that's the thing that that is what pre is preventing us from drinking when we know nobody can see us. Not a single person can see you, except Allah. What is it that's preventing you from drinking? It's because you know that if you drink. Just a small drop on purpose, your fast will no longer be valid and you will have to make it happen. That's the reason, because you know Allah knows. You can't say, mm, let me drink. Nobody will know. Allah won't know. You can't say that. You know Allah will know. And that's why you don't do it. That's why you don't do it, because you're conscious of Allah. So fasting trains you to always think and be conscious of Allah. And if you can abstain from that which is halal, and these are the normal things that are halal for you. To normal eat, eating and drinking are, are halal for us in normal days. But if you can abstain from something that is a requirement for life, and you can stay away from it, how about the sins and so forth? You should be able to do so also. You can't say to yourself, oh no, I can't abstain from that. Well, do you need it to live? Well, you abstain from food and drinks when you have to. In the normal life. Who said you couldn't do it? You can't stay away from it. Well, nobody's watching you, and you didn't drink when that, in that time. You know Allah was watching you. Now when you're, when you're in front of the internet about to watch pornography or something like that, you think Allah doesn't know? You think Allah doesn't know? So you realize, you know what? Allah does know. That's why I didn't drink. That's why I didn't do this and that. And so all of this, the fasting, is to help us attain taqwa and to help us reveal ourselves, and to help us change for the better. And Allah gives so many opportunities in this month for us to change. But if you don't change in this month, then I don't know what kind of iman you have in your heart. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the opportunity to forgive us, uh, to, to, to opportunity for us to repent and change our ways. Listen to what the Prophet said. In Hadith in Sahih Bukhari Muslim. He said, 
that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Huraira radiallahu said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man sama Ramadana, imanan wa hisaba, wa gufira lahu ma taqadda min zambi. Whosoever fasts the month of Ramadan with the true belief in Allah and seeking the reward from Allah alone, nobody else, you do it for Allah's sake. And you fast only because Allah has told you to fast. And you only want the reward from Allah alone. And no other reason. Ihtisaba means you want reward from Allah alone and nothing else. No other reason. You're not fasting because you want to lose weight. You're not fasting because everyone else is fasting. You're not fasting for this or that. Even though some of these things like, you know, health matters and so forth, those are secondary, but that's not the, that's not the reason why you fast. These are the things that you, may, you might attain from it, but that's not your intention. That's not your intention. And so, if you fast solely for the sake of Allah, what will Allah give you? Allah will forgive you all your previous sins. All the sins that you committed before, he will forgive you all, all your sins. So that's an opportunity. But notice that what the Prophet said, Man sama Ramadan, whoever fasts the month of Ramadan. He didn't say, Man sama yawman mina Ramadan, a day in Ramadan, or shahr mina Ramadan, or a or one week in Ram of Ramadan. No, he said, the month of Ramadan. Okay, so you got to, from the beginning to the end, you do it solely for his sake. Now let's say, wow, that's, you know, sometimes we can't do it. Okay? Allah still gives you another opportunity. Allah still gives you another opportunity. And inshallah, you know, for the woman, even though they don't fast the whole month of Ramadan, they still get whatever days that they have to fast, they do it for Allah's sake, inshallah, they'll still get the same thing. Allah, the Prophet said, let's say for those who may be their negligent, one or two days and so forth, they, you know, for one reason or another, they weren't able to achieve this, this goal, fasting solely for his sake and so forth, for the month of Ramadan what we just mentioned. Allah still gives him another opportunity. You know, if you messed up on that one, you still got another opportunity. Here's your second chance. What is it? The Prophet says, Man qama Ramadana, imanin wa ihtisaba, wufira lahu ma taqadda min zambi. Who, whosoever stands up to pray in the month of Ramadan, with true belief in Allah, and doing it solely for his sake, not to show off, not for anything like that, but you're doing it only for hoping for the hoping for the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of his previous sins will be forgiven for him. You'll have all your sins be forgiven for you. All the previous sins be forgiven for you. If you fa if you stand up at night time to pray, the Matanama, whoever stands up to pray. So Notice that the Prophet said, Man qama Ramadana, whoever stands up to pray in Ramadan. But you know what? We got classes, and sometimes you gotta go in the morning, wake up. You might miss a few days. I only got, you know, only the weekends. A few days in the weekends only. It's too difficult every day to fast, to fast and to pray every night, okay? Okay, you still got one more chance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Strike one, strike two. But you know what? You can still get the home run. <coughs> See, I got one more strike. Still can hit the home run. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Man qama laylat al qadr, iman wa hisab, wa ufir alahu ma taqadir min dhab." Whomsoever stands up, laylat al qadr, just one night of laylat al qadr, seeking the reward with the belief in Allah, with true iman in Allah, and hoping for the reward from Allah alone. All his previous sins will be forgiven. SubhanAllah. And you have, you have one more chance. Just one night, brother and sister. Just one night. And you can break it down to the nights. He said, just tear out, take out the even nights. You got the odds. You know you got the odds. You just have a few days. You just spend those nights, make sure you pray. And SubhanAllah, Allah is so gracious. Just one night, all your previous sins will be forgiven. You do it solely for the sake of Allah. So this is the month of change. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, wants to forgive, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to ha have mercy upon a people, then Allah will help you. But you have to make, take the first step. You have to take the initial step first to try to change. And so repent to Allah 
and make the full conviction. And when you know you're making full conviction, don't just go halfway. Make the full conviction to be the best person you can be, the best Muslim you can be. Try to improve yourself every single day. And this is the month that Allah has given us the opportunity to do so, and He's made it easy for us also. How has He made it easy for us? The Prophet said, إِذَا جَاءَ رَمَضَانِ فُتِّحَتْ أَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ وَغُلِّفَتْ أَبْوَابُ الْمِرَانِ وَصُفِّدَتِ الشَّيَاطِينِ When Ramadan comes, the hadith is in Sahih Muslim, when Ramadan comes, the doors of paradise are open, and the doors of the hellfire are closed. They're open for those who want to go to paradise, and the doors of the hellfire are closed. All of and then the shayateen are locked up, are shackled. The shayateen are shackled. And so they are shackled. Why are they shackled? He's your enemy. And Allah shackles him so you can get used to doing good and then continue doing good. And so you can change. This is your opportunity. You know, like for some people, it's very difficult to fast. The Sunnah fast, when it's not Ramadan, they can't fast, not even one day. It's like, oh, man, I want to fast, but when you fast, it's like when you get hungry after Asr or you know, after you come out of class and everybody's eating and drinking, oh, man, it's only Sunnah, I can just break my fast, right? And it's like, <sighs> so difficult, right? But when Ramadan comes, mashallah, you go until the end. You can do it. Allah, show, Allah is showing you, you can. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made shackle the shayateen. That's why it's so much easier. So if you don't change and you don't repent when the shayateen are shackled, you think you're going to do it when he's released? You want to wait till he's released and then do it? No, this is it. This is the time. This is the time to make that conviction. This is the time to change. And this is the time to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. This is the time to read the Qur'an. This is the time to do all that you can, that all you can do that, that, it, that is good, and to change yourself. And so, during this month, this is also the month of mercy. The month of mercy. What is the month of mercy? The month of mercy. What is mercy, first of all? Mercy. How, why is it so important? It's important because it's how you enter paradise. Nobody enters paradise with their deeds. Nobody. You will not be able to enter paradise with your deeds. The Prophet said, nobody enters paradise with their deeds. And so the companion says, Ya Rasulullah, even you, even with all the deeds that you do, you can't enter paradise because of your deeds. He says, even myself. Unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mercy upon me. You know what that means? Why is this the case? Why can't we enter paradise with our deeds? Our deeds can be a reason for mercy, but the actual entry into paradise is because of the mercy. Why? Because paradise is very expensive. Paradise is so great that no, no matter what you do, you can never pay for paradise. No matter how much you, how many, how many prayers, how many thousands of prayers you pray, you can never use that to pay for paradise. It's only because of the mercy of Allah. Why? Because paradise, paradise, you can have whatever you want. You can have anything that you want. You can do whatever you want. Whatever your heart wants, this is it. You can, you can have it. You know people work very, very hard. You know, some people, they buy houses. And it takes them 30 years to pay up, pay the house, pay, pay those payments. And that house might not even be that nice of a house. And if they did buy a really, really nice house, like next to the river, next to the river, next to the ocean, or whatever it may be, sometimes they spend, they put so much effort in paying for that house that they listen. That how much they have to wake up six o'clock in the morning or five o'clock in the morning, and they are never late. Why? Because if they're late too often, they might get fired. They might not make their payments. And they try to do their job the best that they can because they're afraid of getting fired. Right? Especially with the housing markets and all the foreclosures and stuff, right? They're afraid to lose their job because they're afraid to lose that house. They are willing to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning and get out there in traffic no matter how tired they are every single day for 30 straight years just to live in that house. In paradise, that house is like, there's no comparison whatsoever. 
nothing. You can have whatever you want. So how much are you willing to work to get that? To get anything that you want. You just say it and you've got it. How much? If people are willing to work for that many, that many years just to get in that house, and probably they're already 30, by the time they finish paying, they're dead already. They don't even get to enjoy it, right? Most of the time, like that, you know, to say, oh, this is my house. Most people, some people don't even get that. But they're willing to work 30 years, 40 years sometimes, right? And they get up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks you to get up in the morning. But you know what? He gives you even more than that. No matter how much you do, in comparison to what you are going to get in paradise, it's so much greater that you are only entering paradise because of the mercy of Allah. You know, we have a child. Your child wants a bike. He wants a bicycle. And this bicycle is a very nice bike. It's like $250, and he wants this bike. Like, you know, Father, you have to do it. And he's been asking for like months and almost a year, like, you know, every day insisting. His friend has it. It's a really cool bike. Okay. So, you really, you know, you tell your son, you go, son, you keep your house clean right now. You know, you clean your house, you know, your room, and you just clean your room, make it like super clean. Right? I'll buy it for you. I'll buy it for you. He goes to his room and starts cleaning it up. You know, he's trying to like do the best that he can. He comes back after half an hour, Father, my room is spick and spare. Shiny, just, you know, like, clean and smelling good and everything, right? 30 minutes later, because he was trying very hard to clean up his room. 30 minutes later, he said, Fine, go outside. Mashallah, your room is really nice. Let's go to the store. I'll get it for you, right? In 30 minutes, how much money did he make? How much money did he make in 30 minutes? $250. Did he really make $250? Did you give him money because he cleaned your room for $250? Hey, if you can clean somebody's room for two hundred fifty dollars, let me do it. <laughs> right? I do it. I mean, I'm gonna do, get two hundred fifty dollars in thirty minutes. Hey, that's pretty good, right? Two hundred fifty dollars. Did you give it to him because of what he did? No. You gave it to him because you felt sorry for him. You had mercy on him. He didn't deserve it with that deed, but because you saw him, like, oh, he's so obedient. Like, he did it so. He cleaned it so well, and like he went right away. So you felt sorry for him. You had mercy. You, you know, you felt pity for him. You know, and you felt you, you love him because you have mercy. You know, as your, as your as your son. And so you go and you buy it for him. He didn't earn it because of what he did, really. What well, actually it is connected to what he did, but what he did was not worth what you're going to give him. It's not equal. What you're going to give him is much more than that. So Allah Subhanahu what He's going to give you is so much more than that. But you have to earn it by earning the mercy of Allah. So every time in the month of Ramadan, when you stand up to pray, say, Allah, 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 Allah. You know, sometimes in thought about you're tired. Right? You're tired and so on. And maybe you're tired, but you say, inshallah, you know, I hope that Allah will forgive me and have mercy upon me today. And so you stand up that extra rak'ah. And you stand up to try to focus, be more focused. We're only doing this so that you're hoping that Allah can, you know, Allah will have mercy upon you. And so maybe on that night, Allah will say, Oh so and so, and I see you like you're working so hard. Like, even though you're tired, but you still want to take that extra step, make that extra effort, you have earned my mercy. And from this day on, you are amongst the people of paradise. I'm walking on this earth, but you're amongst the people of paradise. After that, Allah will help you do all the deeds of the people of paradise. So, don't be little of guilty. Don't ever be little of guilty. Do all that you can, as sincerely as possible, and hope in the mercy of Allah. Because this is the month of mercy. Have mercy, have mercy towards your, your fellow <coughs> classmates, your fellow Muslims, uh, here and all over the world. Maybe Allah will have mercy upon you, just like the Prophet said, يَرْحَمُوا مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ have mercy upon those who are on earth and the one who is in the heavens will have mercy upon you. And so this is the month of generosity, being merciful to, towards others. And don't belittle a good deed because any deed 
it, it's sincere, maybe Allah will say, you know, because of that deed, I will enter this person's paradise. And every deed that you do, hope that Allah will, will, will have mercy upon you because of it. Have that, have that in your mind. Even if it's a little thing. Because you can enter paradise even if you just fed a dog. And that's what happened during the time of Bani Israel when the Prophet وسلم, told us. He, he said that there was a woman. This is not a regular woman. This is a prostitute. She was walking around, walking in the desert. She was very, very thirsty. She came across a well. And so she went into the well. And she drank until she was quenched. And then when she came out of the well, she saw that there was a dog that was licking the wet ground around the area of the well. And she felt sorry for the dog. And she said, you know what? This dog, you know, I was so thirsty before I came here. I went down and drank. This dog is just as thirsty. Just as thirsty as I was. It can't jump in the well or drown to death. Yeah. So she goes down and she fills up her leather socks, her hoof. She brings it out and she lets the dog drink until it's quenched. And Allah sees this deed of this prostitute. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is thankful towards her that the Prophet said in Sahih Muslim, Hadith this Hadith this Sahih Muslim, that Allah forgave her sins. In another narration, Allah entered her paradise because she had mercy towards a dog. Towards a dog. That was the deed, that was the turning point in her life. Allah saw that and he was thankful for what that person did. He saw the mercy in her heart and Allah had mercy in that Get, 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 had mercy towards that person. And so she, in, she entered paradise because of it. She entered paradise because of it. This person was kind towards a dog, an animal. Now imagine if that person was kind towards a Muslim, kind towards a human, or even better, a Muslim, or even better, your relatives. These are people, these are Muslims. If you had that, you're helping your brother, you're helping your sister. You prefer others over yourself. And you say, inshallah, you know, I'm going to give this to this sister or this brother because they need it more than me. Maybe Allah will say, you know what? I have chosen you, chosen you amongst the people of paradise. And you have to understand that the Prophet ﷺ said, in Ramadan, especially the nights of Ramadan, Allah frees. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees people from the hellfire more than any other month. Because this is the month of mercy. Remember? Meaning Allah chooses more people and says, you know what, these are the people of paradise. These are the people. I have chosen this person because of this month, this person did this and so forth. So you have your chances of being amongst the people of paradise are way up during this month. And if you know your chances are way up, what should you be doing? You should be trying to do all that you can to achieve the mercy of Allah in hopes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to you, I have chosen you amongst the people of paradise. I have chosen you amongst those who I have freed from the hellfire. And then from that time on, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep on guiding you and guiding you until you eventually will enter paradise. But you know, it might have been 2008. Maybe it was on September, what's today's date? Six, six. September 6, 2008. It was that night that you were chosen amongst the people of paradise. Because you, you maybe you took that extra step. Because you had that extra concern. And so, the Prophet said, Don't ever belittle a good deed. Even if it's just meeting your brother, be what him talk with a happy face, a smile on your face. And also, the Prophet said, a man also entered paradise because of just clearing the way for the people. There was a tree that fell down and was blocking the people's way. It was making, difficult, making it difficult for them. So he said, you know what, this tree is causing a lot of hardship for the Muslims. They have to go around. And so he cleans it, he pushes it away, and he clears the way. And Allah is thankful for what he did because of his heart. But 
He's, he's, he's not thinking about himself. He says, you know what? I want to do this for the Muslims. I want to give this back to the Muslim Ummah. Just push the tree over, just to make it easy for other people to go. And you know what? He got paradise because of that. Allah forgave him all his sins. He got paradise because of that. So anytime you do something, make a preference. As you know, when we love each other, the Prophet said, <coughs> You will not enter paradise until you believe. You won't enter paradise. And you will not have belief until you love each other. In other words, you have mercy towards each other and you love each other. And Would you like me to show you something that you can do to make you love each other? He said, Afya Salam. Spread the salat. So spread the salat. And also another thing to make us love each other. The Prophet said, Tahadu Tahafu. Give exchange gifts and you will love each other. <coughs> give each other gifts and you will love each other. It's not sunnah to give gifts during Eid only. You know, you wait for Eid and you give gifts. No, it's not. You give gifts whenever they least expect it. They're not expecting anything. And then you give it to them. Even if it's a candy bar, they'll be happy. But you know, they're expecting something. Sometimes it's very... You know, like, if you're, in the, you're, in, you're living in a society, right? We are living in this, you know, materialistic society. If you ask any non-Muslim, any Christian, what's the most stressful time of the year? They will tell you, it's Christmas holiday season. They might, they, they might tell you it's a time of ha joy and happiness, but they will also tell you it's the most stressful time of the year. You know why it's stressful? Because you got to buy this person that, this person this, and then in the end, sometimes you don't get what you want. <laughs> right? Sometimes you don't get what you want. But you got to buy so many people, and you know, it's good to receive presents, but you're expecting it Normally, if somebody were to give you that in March, you would jump for joy. But you know what? You got that, but it wasn't like up to par with what you really wanted, and you're sad. You're sad. So you know, as Muslims, you give gifts, but don't give it when they're expecting it. But always do. Try to be consistent in this also. So you'll love each other, and when you love each other, it's easy to help each other do good. And this is how you achieve true Iman. Because it will keep you away from sins. When you love each other, you don't backbite each other. Right? When you love each other, you work together. When you love each other, you respect each other's opinion. When you love each other, you can get projects going really quickly. Nobody has an ego or anything. Man, the brother's always so nice. I, I'll, I'll let him have his way, you know, right? Man, because, you know, you're always helping each other. You're always giving gifts to each other. It builds this love, and then the community goes forward. And then the MSA goes forward. And then your family, everything that's, you know, goes smoothly. Because you love each other. And then it's easier for you to pray. Go to the masjid. Read the Quran. You're not stressed out to death. You have Iman in your heart, and you're happy. And you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all that you have. And so, your path to paradise is made easy because you love each other. And so next time, this is, a, this is something that we should be trying to do. When you go to the store next time, when you buy something for yourself, think of somebody, your uncle, your aunt, your brother, your husband, your father, your mother. It doesn't matter who it is. Just buy them something. Give them a present. They're not expecting it. You didn't come from, you know, if you like, you know, you go back to Malaysia and you come back or something like that. You, know, you have your friends here, they are expected to buy something for them, right? You know? But what if you're like, just all of a sudden, just come up and give you a box of chocolate, for example. MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah, you know, it's a box of chocolate, three dollars, brother. <laughs> but you score. <laughs> like with your spouse, for example, let's say, you know, all of a sudden, like, she's not expecting that. Yeah. And then you get this present. Even as a box of chocolate, three hundred three ninety nine. 
Man, is ha she's happy. She's really happy. But if she was expecting something, and uh, for example, okay, Eve, you have to get something, okay. If you gave her, you know, just something even more expensive, like a diamond ring or maybe a gold ring or whatever it is, she might not even be as happy as when she wasn't expecting it. But you know what? That's a point scored. So brothers when you, and sisters, you want to score points with your spouse? Just give them presents. It's not how expensive it is, it's how many points you can score. And then how continuous you are with it. So every time you go to the masjid, or every time you go to the store, think of your uncle first. All of a sudden you just come, you meet him. Uncle, I just have a gift for you. Just take this. MashaAllah. Next time, maybe you gave your uncle a right? right? Not your dad. Like your dad's not expecting anything. He comes back from work, dad, look at this pen. I just got it. MashaAllah. JazakAllah khair. And he starts hugging you. Yeah, you can have your whatever you want now. <laughs> but you're not doing it for that, right? <laughs> you're doing it for Allah's sake. But you build this love in, in the in the family. And so that's why the Prophet said, Tahabu Tahab. Give gifts. Don't give like doing Eid and so forth. If you're used to doing it, stop. And then when they least expect it, come with surprise. But be consistent. And then, subhanAllah, just do this. Maybe somebody you know of masjid. It doesn't have to be something very expensive. Five dollars and ten dollars, but they're not expecting it. Man, it's like, it's great. Build this bond. And you'll see that your family, everything, you know, they won't be backbiting about you anymore. So you don't have to worry about what they're saying. You don't have to be stressed out about that anymore. You know, in the community, in the family, in the you know, in your organization, whatever it is, you see it's totally changed. So, this is the month that we should make those convictions and start and make our plan, you know, from now on, because this is a training. You know, before you meet the enemy, you have to have your plan, battle plans. Ramadan, the enemy is shackled up. This is training time. You know, in the army and so forth, navy, wherever, whoever it is, when they practice, when they train, what do they do? Do they kill each other? Is the enemy there? No, the enemy is not there. But they're practicing. See, if the enemy was here, what would you do? Okay, he's here, he's not here, okay. If he's here, this is what I would do. If he's not, if he's come from this side, this is what we do. This is the formation that we take. Right? Through practice. The enemy is gone in Ramadan. And you're practicing prayer, fasting, sadaqah, zakat. Now you know what to do. So when the enemy comes back, that's where you're attacking from. And when he attacks you, this is your guard. This is what you do. Because he's taken away. It's training season for us. When he's released, if you don't train them this time, you're not going to be ready. You're not going to be ready when the shayatim is released. So this month, this month is very important to rejuvenate our iman to strengthen our iman, to help us gain conscious, consciousness of Allah. So you remember, you know what, in Ramadan, I didn't drink. I was by myself. I didn't drink. Nobody would have known. Only Allah would have known. And then when Ramadan is over, or when you're by yourself thinking about committing a sin, you know what, I didn't drink in those times because I knew Allah was conscious of you. I don't, you think Allah's not conscious right now? I mean, Allah's not, Allah doesn't know what you're doing. Yeah, yes, He does. Just like, well, you didn't do that then. Well, don't do it here. You, know, you don't have to do it here. Control yourself. And maybe when we leave a certain deed, maybe because of that deed, that you you had all these like, people like pulling you, and then you left it, and you did it for Allah's sake, maybe Allah will say, you know what? My servant, he was able to do it. But he didn't do it. Why? Because he feared me. Because he had taqwa. He was conscious of me. I have chosen the most of people in paradise. So every single deed, do that. Compare yourself. For example, you know sometimes you feel the urge to backbite. It's like, man, I gotta talk about this person. And they, I can't. You know, it's like you have that urge, right? It's like, you know it's wrong, but man, I have to do it. <laughs> you know? The, the, are you, sometimes you, you fall into that, that, that case. Like, 
that person did such and such things to me. I have to tell these people, right? You know, it's like, man, I can't. You know, it's like it's about to explode, right? So you say to yourself, what do you say to yourself? You say to yourself, you say, Ya Abdullah, Ya Muhammad, Ya Ammar, would you play paradise for that? Would you prefer to speak about that person and release that pressure? Or would you, if Allah said, I'll give you paradise if you don't do that? Where would you want paradise? Which one's better? Of course you say, you know what? I'm not going to do it because I want paradise. Paradise is better. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Just this flashing moment, you release this that you want to fulfill your desires, and then Allah will, you know, will be either this or paradise, which one would you choose? Every time put yourself in the good after. Would you trade that for paradise? Of course not. You would say, why am I going to trade this person? I don't like them anyways. You know? It's like, I don't even like this person. And they're causing me to call, commit this sin. I don't like them anyway. I don't want to give to them anyways. So because you're talking to them, you're giving your good deeds to them. It's like, you hate them anyways. You don't even like them, but you're helping them in the process. Why would you want to help them? If you don't like that person, don't talk about them. Because the only thing you're doing is giving them more good deeds. From yourself, it's like giving them a present. If you don't like that person, don't give them any more presents. Right? If you do want to give presents, give them presents of this dunya, but not the hereafter. Because that's more valuable. That's what Hassan al-Basri did. Al-Hassan al-Basri. One of his students came to him and said, you, um, this person is always talking about you, Imam. He's always talking about you. That person, Hassan uh, al-Basri, uh, such and such is always talking about you, slandering you, saying this and that. So tell me what he is. So they tell him, yeah, there's there again. So they're thinking like he's going to go and like, uh, like bash him or say something about him. He goes to the marketplace. That's the marketplace in the Bible. He goes to that person. He says, I really apologize. He says, oh, I can afford it. You know? And I'd like to give you so much more. Because you've done so much for me. You so much. And so the guy goes, what are you talking about? You're not giving so much. Like, I hate you and I'm talking about you all the time. What are you talking about? I'm helping you and giving you. He says, you're giving me so much. All I, can, I, all I can afford to give you. I'm just thankful for what you did. You're giving me this. You know, you're giving me so much. Good deeds like prayers and fasting and so forth. Like you're t it's tiring, you know, in the morning. Why are you giving it for free? Like, I didn't even ask for it. <laughs> and so you're so generous. This is the only thing I can give you back, back to you. That's all I can afford so the guy's wondering, he's like, wow, what's this guy, what's he, what is he not giving me this present? So he starts thinking about it, he says, no, you know, he's trying to make a statement. And so he repents to him, he repents and asks forgiveness from Hassan Basri. And he becomes one of his closest students. And he just sits with him all the time, because he realizes what would happen. He realizes with how the Imam is. He gives, instead of like yelling, he gives him a present. But the Imam is trying to advise him. The, the way that he advises him. So he gives him good presents. You know, then you think about it, say, wow, you know what? I shouldn't be talking about him anymore. It's right. You know, let me learn more about this from, from this person. And so he becomes one of his students. But this is the micro change. Control your time. Whatever you do in this month, it's, you know, this is hope that Allah subhanahu will give you paradise. For you. Go to pray every single day. The Father went prayer. Join in helping other people look for projects and try to bring forward. Maybe, for example, we want non-Muslims to realize, you know, about fasting. When you know, I think you guys have the fast stuff on coming up and so forth. Be involved and help with it. Maybe your actions, even though your brother, your friends, and your companions, they don't know what you did behind them and to get this project going, to get everything, to get all these people. They don't know, but Allah still knows. And do that in hope that in hopes that Allah Subhanahu will say. Maybe, you know, I've chosen this person amongst the people of paradise because they went, for, you know, they took the extra effort. They didn't do it for anybody else except for my sake. You know, Allah subhanahu will say that to you. And I have chosen you amongst the people of paradise. So everything that you do, do it for his sake. That's why the Prophet said, Man sama Ramadan, Iman al Whoever fasts the month of Ramadan with true belief in Allah, the certainty in Allah, the belief, with the true faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and seeking the reward from Him alone. It's very important. Seeking reward from Him alone. 
then inshallah, maybe Allah subhanahu will give you that, inshallah. I, uh, I apologize if I went over, you know, like today at the masjid, I went a little bit over, you know, like they say, don't give a woman a telephone and don't give a shake a microphone. <laughs> and just keep on talking, right? <laughs> so, inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather us all again in paradise just as he gathered us here uh, today. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all our fasting, our zakat, and all our righteous deeds and prayers and so forth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us love each other for the sake. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather us in the highest level in paradise with all the prophets and messengers. Just like he has gathered us today, inshallah, maybe we can talk about it when we get to paradise and exist. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's all able to do all things. Inshallah, if anybody has any questions, we can open the floor, otherwise. Uh, I might ask a question. <laughs> That's what I do now. I might ask a question. But we don't have a question. Go ahead, Shama. Yes, it would be considered an innovation if you chose that time to do it consistently. It's always eight that you do it. It would be considered because you have set something. Uh, you know, giving gifts is something that's recommended. But if you chose just eat to do it and you always do it in read time, then you're just imitating the non Muslims in choosing that time. And as I mentioned, there are, you, 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 you see the ramifications of it. And just think about it. What makes them so stressed out? And the, the gift is actually not that valuable in terms of its, you know, in terms of its effect. Because you might, they might spend a lot of money on something, and you're spending a lot of money, but you know what? Maybe that's not what you really wanted. And it's just, it's just not, it doesn't show true love. It's not true love because you have to do it. So let's say if you didn't do it, and you did love that person, but you didn't buy them, they would hate you for no reason. You know? Like, they, they, if they didn't hate you, they would feel very disappointed. You know, it's like, oh, it's, you know, it's Christmas, and you didn't buy me anything. It's like, you know, what's this? You know? This is, it's, it's a great, major, it's a major sin now. But it's supposed to be a season of love and you know, forget, uh, forgiving and so forth, and good thoughts about people and things like that. But it becomes the opposite. And that's why they take advantage, advantage of it, you know, uh, in commercially. And so, you know, if you don't get anything, go out from here, try and try this, inshallah. Every time you go to the store, buy something. It doesn't cost a lot, you know, like, yeah, yeah, what do you call it? Um, Hershey's Kisses or something. Those are, you know, those are good. And they're not expecting it. Even if it's two dollars, they'll, they'll be happy. You know? Even if it's a dollar store balloon, they'll be happy, right? You know, <laughs> like, if they're not expecting it, right? You know, <laughs> honestly. And so, but be consistent and you'll see that the people around you will treat you differently. But you don't do it because of that. And it will be easier for you to pray, easier for you to do everything. And the, the whole community and the whole group, the whole, all the Muslims, we start loving each other. You know, give the salams to each other, greet each other, and speak to each other, and help each other when you're always helping. That's why zakat. This is zakat, and sadaqah, and so forth. This is the, this is the month to train yourself to be Muslims. In fact, Ramadan is how we should be all year round. But Allah Subhanahu has chosen this month just to wake us up. This is how you should be. It's not only for this month. Continue this way. This is the path. And this is how a Muslim should be. So as a Muslim, Ramadan or outside Ramadan, it shouldn't, uh, they, they, they should be the same. And you should be praying the night prayers anyways, all the time. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shaking us up, refueling ourselves, reminding us, hey, you know what? All these years, all these months you've been forgiven. It's just time to change. Wake up. Wake up. And smell the roses, right? They say. Like, know what's really going on. And so, inshallah, any more questions? And that's all the questions we'll end with. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.